Welcome to another episode of Insider Knowledge. Uh, today we have Nick Watt, um, who has a plethora, plethora of marketing experience spanning, spanning from e-consultancy uh, to demand exchange. Um, so welcome, Nick. Yeah, hello. How are you? Hi. Very good. Thanks. Yourself? Excellent. Excellent. So uh, tell me a bit about yourself, what you do, and uh, yeah, a bit about what, what your company does as well. Yeah, so my background, I guess, is content. I started out many, many years ago in in magazine publishing, um, but really my focus the last few years um, has has been around content, mainly in the B two B sector. So, for example, I edited a thing called CMO.com for Adobe uh, across the mayor, launched the German language version of it, which was basically a, a site that helps. Uh, or help senior marketers and business leaders kind of get insights around what was happening around digital and marketing. Um, currently, I'm, I'm at Demand Exchange. I've kind of worked with John Horsley, who's the founder, for seven or eight years now. In fact, uh, when I was at CMO.com, that was with John. Um, but Demand Exchange, like a, a lot of, I guess, marketing businesses, has kind of pivoted over the last couple of years and basically the space demand exchange sits in now basically we were about providing a mixture of technology content and a lot of expertise that the idea is it to really help companies identify and acquire their next best customer um so you know we add functionality and features to to our clients websites and it's about how do you engage visitors? And I mean, typically we work across a number of sectors. The one we're most known for is working in marketing technology. So, you know, some of our biggest clients, I mentioned Adobe earlier. Uh, we've worked with people like Sitecore, Trustpilot, whole bunch of companies. Um, and that's included creating mainly, I guess, research-led content, whether that's quantitative or, or qualitative. Um, and then obviously supplying them with kind of sales ready uh, leads. So lead generation element. But we're, I guess, uh, are taking at the moment the technology and, and trying to develop that into new areas. So we recently did a big campaign with Mitsubishi Chemical, you know, huge global uh, company with, I think, something like six or 700 different bits of businesses as part of it. Um, and off the back of the campaign, which was around a business challenge they were running for startups and scale ups, we've actually uh, just, well, we're, we're going to an award ceremony in a few weeks time and we're up for four awards um, on the night for that. So it's it's been really successful. And what we're looking at is, is I guess, how we layer a kind of range of services on top of our technology, which, you know, allows people to kind of run successful lead and demand generation campaigns. So that's everything from the content production to syndicating the content right through to fully managed services. Fantastic. I'm just going through the actual website now. I think one thing that's always, I wouldn't say sort of necessarily bugged me, but when we I've looked at sort of lead generation solutions is the integration part. There's so much technology out there from CRM systems to um, how you sort of configure the leads and look at the the return on investment, whatever that might be, put into various different reports. So how do you tackle the integration side when there's so many different technology platforms? Out um, so we use a bunch of tools that allows us to pretty much integrate with anything. So, for example, with Mitsubishi Chemical, um, you know, we were easily, it was very easy for us to actually integrate straight into their CRM system. But more importantly, particularly as we work with a lot of very, very large multinationals who often their websites are run by IT departments. So making anything happen quickly is, is not something they can typically do. However, what we created for Mitsubishi, we literally supplied them with one line of code, which they could put on their website. And all of a sudden they had a resource hub or a resource center on their website, which was totally branded and so had exactly the same look and feel as, as their existing website, but provided a whole bunch of functionality. So it, it's something we've been, you know, really keen to ensure that it, it does work with pretty much everything um that's out there and obviously you know we're always looking at the sort of technologies i guess enterprise companies are using 
And I think as as we see people maybe moving away, where I think the, the the real big thing a couple of years ago was platforms. I think we're now starting to see a lot more companies looking at best of breed technologies. And of course, all this stuff needs to work together. And of course, we've now got you know the the technology that the kind of bits that help join all this tech together is a lot easier to use i mean you know early days we were using you know little bits of software that help do that but now there's you know solutions which make it so much easier i suppose looking at the economy at the moment looks a bit gloomy especially for yeah. these big corporate companies what what advice would you give to these companies who are perhaps looking at their budget or looking at maybe sort of, uh, I suppose, looking at the outlook in terms of, uh, of sales and sort of lead generation? Yeah, well, I think that there's a lot of challenges businesses have faced around lead generation, partly because a lot of the traditional partners they would go to for leads um, necessarily weren't the most sophisticated businesses. So, you know, part of our technology, um, so as you're entering uh, your information into a form to download an asset from, you know, from uh, that we've either produced for our clients or, or assets they already have their own, we're actually in the background verifying the email address, verifying the telephone number. So we know these things exist. Um, we then have a team of people who will take a lead once it's come through, if it looks correct, will then go through, not only validate it and make sure that the person says it is who it is. I mean, you know, amount of times I've seen, you know, people put, you know, then, then through, my name is Donald Duck at, at Disney.co.uk. Now, we obviously know that's not going to be a lead, particularly when the telephone number is probably 01234567 um so our, our technology does a lot to improve the quality of leads and i think that's the biggest challenge a lot of businesses have got i think the other thing is we're also starting to increasingly add a bunch of other services that helps um, businesses connect with potential buyers far more effectively but i think the real challenge really as i mentioned earlier there's something up to 70 percent um of, of the actual customer journey or the buyer's journey is completed by the time they ever pick up the phone and contact, uh, you know, a potential supplier. I think you need to have content that allows you to have conversations with those people far earlier, um, particularly when they're starting to do research around the specific topic. And, and part of that is about having engaging content, which I mean, it isn't totally product focused. And again, for a lot of big B2B organizations, you know, typically their content is very product focused, but it doesn't really often explain how their technology or, you know, how their products might actually solve the problem somebody's got within a business. Yeah, so I think that the things people need to look at, it, it's not just, you know, finding a company that supplies better quality leads it's it's the the whole kind of thinking about the whole of the buyer journey and the content that you need to influence it um i think that's going to become more and more important so i think something people are going to need to be thinking about is retention and again you know supply, producing really strong content can help you retain customers you know i've seen too many times businesses where you know, say it's a piece of technology or software they sell in, you know, it's a three year license, you know, they initially install it for the customer, they spend a bit of time helping them get it up and working, and then they don't talk to them for, you know, till about three months before they're about to renew and then wonder if the client, you know, why the client turns around and said, nah, sorry, we're going to do something else now. There's there's so many different platforms to to I suppose you can't put all your eggs in one basket. But whether it's writing blogs, you've got social media, you've got SEO, you've got there's so many things that you could start off doing. I mean, from from an SME point of view, maybe someone who hasn't got a massive budget, where would you recommend them start their efforts? Would it just be keep writing blogs and hoping for the best or? I think the challenge of writing blog posts, I, I saw a, a site which was a classic example the other day. Um, it was a relatively well-funded business in the fintech sector and all the content at the site was written by the founder and they had about 12 or 15 posts and it was all written by him and in fact their investors have turned around and said one you need more content but it needs to be more diverse. So 
you know, and the other challenge you've got is is you need to get that content wider than your own website. If you think about how many competitors you might have, I mean, just in the broadest terms, the Martech sector, we reckon there's at least 8,000 companies out there. So, you know, if you're talking about, say, maybe CRM systems, for example, there's hundreds and hundreds of companies that you could go and look at. So I think, you know, looking at the different channels that you're going to use and how you, you know, create a conversation that people want to engage with, I think is is a challenge. But, you know, you work out who your personas are, work out what sort of channels they use, work out the challenges and problems they've got, you know, create posts which maybe talk about the most common challenges people are having and how you can help solve it. All of a sudden you become useful. And I think even if somebody's not necessarily in buying mode at that time, they might remember you and come back to you um, when the time is ready, because actually those guys gave some pretty good advice. Yeah, definitely. In terms of uh, make, making mistakes online, what's the most common that you, you constantly see? Again, it varies across sector. Um, B2B and B2C can be often very different. And even within B2B, which is where I operate these days, we see massive changes. For example, you look at some of the bigger marketing technology companies, they're very sophisticated in terms of content and how they go around lead generation. A lot of them are now working with the campus marketing. The levels of sophistication are quite high, where a lot of very large kind of more traditional big large b2b organizations tend to be very focused on product so their marketing people are very product focused as is their content um which you know when people's expectations because we're consumers not just for work we're consumers for you know for business as well our expectations have changed um and, you know, we we need to know that not only has this company got the right product, but they're the right people to work with, particularly when there's so much competition. Yeah, definitely. And in terms of um, sort of, I suppose the marketing's changed so much within the last 10 years. I mean, can you sort of uh, predict where, where it might go for the next 10 years at all? Oh, heavens. Um, <laughs> I think even struggling to say two years ago, I mean, you know, when I first got involved in this industry, there wasn't an internet. I mean, I launched my first websites in, in the mid 70s. And even in the last four or five years, um, I mean, I also, over the last 10 years, have also taught marketing strategy um, at, at various colleges and, and for various institutions. And I think the one thing you can say is it will continue to keep changing. And I think the real mistake a lot of marketers make is just not keeping up to date. Um, I've certainly seen examples when I was at e-consultancy, very large, very famous, quite often B2C brands whose marketing had traditionally been dominated by things like TV and maybe print advertising advertising really struggled with digital uh, his understanding is maybe not great now as we increasingly get younger and younger um cmos i think that is changing um you know there's probably less people my age or older who are in those positions because you know people of that generation typically didn't grow up with digital and sometimes still struggle with it you know, the yeah. fact that we're now an industry which is not really about creativity, it's about data. Um, you know, a lot of people got into marketing or advertising because it was, hey, it was creative, it was cool, it was funky. Um, it's still cool and funky, but it's very different. Um, you know, we have so many different channels, we've got so many different technologies, there's just so many different ways we can do things that, you know, you can't stand still. And I think that's the big mistake a lot of marketers make. Yeah, I've, I've, I've definitely made the same mistake myself where you suddenly stand still thinking, I'm just going to keep doing what I keep doing and not changing it. And I think it's it's constantly evolving. You certainly can't think that you know it all because you, you're not, you, you'll get beaten by the competition if you think you know everything. Yeah, and it's, uh, yeah, I mean, people's I mean, attention spans are getting smaller and smaller, isn't it? So with the likes of TikTok and things like that, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's just keeping ahead of the competition as well. And I think the challenge is, is you know, from a marketing perspective, 
you know, I think for some companies, the teams that they're having to use are, are growing because, the, you know, you need people with a whole host of different skills. Um, and, and you know, not only as a senior marketer, do you have to at least have an understanding of how all these things work, but you need people who, you know, really in granular detail know how to deliver across these different platforms or via these different technologies, um, which I think is a real challenge. Um, you know, and certainly recruiting. You know, how do you know what a really, really good technical search marketer looks like when you've never done any technical search marketing yourself? Yeah, of course. Would you say that's probably one of the biggest challenges in the industry is, is get, getting that right expertise and knowing where to find it, I suppose? Yeah, yeah, which is, you know, it's a big problem I think we all face. Um, I mean, there's a real challenge now that, you know, salaries for people who are very good at doing what they do, specifically for something new. Um, so, you know, certainly around demand generation and lead generation, you know, we're seeing a, a whole growth of kind of new marketers. And, and because there's so few people who've got lots of expertise in those areas, the salaries are starting to go through the roof because you've got everything from, you know, very large big to big organizations with, you know, billion pound budgets right through to small startups who kind of all need the same skill sets. Where do you find the people? Yeah, that's uh, certainly one of the biggest challenges I'm finding. Well, we're finding in the in the recruitment space, especially within marketing, we we tend to get a lot of our clients come to us because they they do struggle to recruit themselves. But there's there's a number of challenges on top of that, not just finding the right challenge, so the right applicants, but just the whole sort of uh, the, their sort of process, whether it's internal, or external. And it could yeah. be from, uh, I posted something up earlier today. Someone said, um, <laughs> it's a bit of a joke, but they, the interviewer asked them, what's, it, what's the biggest challenge you've, you've had? And they, they, they turned around and said, well, it's actually your job application process. Um, just because it was so long, so tedious, um, it can put a lot of candidates off. Yes. And that's what a lot of employees don't necessarily realise. Um, and, and from yeah. that to, I mean, to, to, you know, to, the, you know, to the interview process as well. So. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the advantages we've got with demand exchange, you know, where we're a relatively lean business um, that that's going through, you know, quite a big period of growth at the moment. Um, but yeah, you know, you need to know what you want, react quickly, because quite often you can see somebody who think you is good. And if you've got, a, as you say, a long, laborious process in terms of recruitment, you can very quickly lose somebody who you thought was great and probably the right candidate. But before you know it, they've gone somewhere else. Yeah, that's definitely the, the case. For, I think it's yeah, it's just making sure you've got the right process in place and the right talent in place. And uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly an evolving industry. So, um, yeah, it's but it's. Great, been great having you on 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 the on the show, um, right. and I wish you best best of luck in the future. Great, thanks.